Welcome to the Master Info Week of the Università della Svizzera Italiana. For the whole week, you will find useful resources such as a welcome from our rector, Professor Boas Eretz, a campus tour, testimonials from both current students and alumni, and an overview of UZI's graduate's placement opportunities. You can watch a brief description of our students' services and a useful tutorial on how to fill the online application form. Now, you're about to attend a thorough presentation of the master structure and contents. You can ask us any question, academic or administrative related, through the chat below this video or through the form at the bottom of the page. After the presentation, we will answer all your questions during a live session with the director of the program. Thank you and enjoy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gabriele Pavota, and together with Professor Cesare Potasso, I direct the Master in Software and Data Engineering at the Università della Svizzera Italiana. In this video, we are going to illustrate our program and to tell you why it's a great choice for your professional career. Before moving to the study program, let's briefly talk about these two disciplines that we combine together, namely software and data engineering. Let's start with the software part, okay? Software is nowadays the backbone of our society. It's basically everywhere. And software is becoming more and more complex over time. Let me give you a few examples from this beautiful infographic that you can find on informationisbeautiful.com. Here you can see different software systems sorted by their size in terms of lines of code. And if we look at Photoshop, for example, in its first version from 1990, we can see that it had around 100,000 lines of code, okay? Well, the same software 10 years later had 4.5 million lines of code. So it was around 40 times bigger. And this pattern can be observed across several pieces of software. For example, if we look at the Windows operating system, it went from the 4.5 million lines of code in 1993 up to the 50 million lines of code for Windows Vista in 2007. And if we think, for example, to modern cars, well, they can run something like 100 million lines of code. That means if you try to print this code, you will get more or less 5 million printed pages. Okay? Now, I use all these numbers to convey a single message, meaning that software is not only central in our life, but it's also becoming more and more complex. And you know, at this point, you may think, okay, but the size of a system does not really imply its complexity, which is true. So let me tell you something more. In 2004, the Standish Group ran a study on more than 8,000 software projects. And what they did was basically to categorize these software projects based on their outcome, okay? So they had three possible outcomes. Projects that succeeded, meaning that the project was delivered on time, on budget, and it actually featured everything that was planned at the beginning. Projects that were challenged, meaning that they were delivered, but maybe they were over time, over budget, or both, or they didn't really implement what they promised at the beginning. And finally, those that failed, meaning those projects that were canceled down the road. Now, a question for you is, what is, in your opinion, the percentage of these 8,000 projects that succeeded, were challenged, or failed? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so let me show you the results. Less than one in six projects succeeded, 16%. So why is this the case? Well, in one sentence, this is due to the fact that software is very likely the most complex construct ever built by humans. It has millions of components that needs to interact between them, okay? So the complexity is there, the complexity is huge, and in our master program, what we try to do is to teach our students how to deal with the complexity of modern software systems. But you know, this complexity is not only due to the code itself, it's also due to the data that this code generates and manipulates. In other words, software nowadays is immersed in data. To give you an example, a modern Formula One car can generate four gigabytes of data per lap. This means something like 50 megabytes per second, and these are data that more often than not must be processed and analyzed in real time. 
basically we need software to make sense of this huge amount of data that is coming in real time but in many cases we also need to comprehend the data that the software manipulates and generates in order to understand the software itself so for these reasons we decide to combine in our master these two disciplines software and data engineering with the goal of teaching our students how to design develop architect and test high quality large scale software and data intensive systems so this is the the goal of our master and now professor protasso will show you our study program Let's take a look at the structure of the program, which is over two years. The last semester is entirely dedicated to the master thesis. The lectures of the first three semesters are organized in a software engineering pillar, in the data engineering pillar, and in the software and data engineering ateliers. There are also electives in the first year, for example, mobile and wearable computing, compiler constructions or information security, which allow students to customize the program to fit their interests. In the fall semester, we offer a unique uh, seminar which uh, helps the students to find a suitable uh, topic for their master thesis by visiting the research groups of the Software Institute and by preparing a thesis proposal so that in the first day of the spring semester they are ready to go and start with their master thesis projects. Let's now take a look in detail at the lectures of the first three semesters. In the software engineering pillar, we start by building a solid foundation with the software design modeling, domain specific languages and programming style lectures. In the second semester, we have the software analysis and software architecture lectures. While in the third semester, we have the cyber physical software engineering and software performance lectures. Let's welcome Professor Matthias Hauwirt, who is going to give us a brief overview about the programming style lecture. In this course, you'll learn to program in style. A style is a set of constraints which will either keep you away from familiar areas or force you into unknown ones. This will get you to exercise all your programming muscles, even those you never knew you had. You do that in multiple languages, Python, JavaScript, and Java, and you'll discover gems like self and small talk. But this course is not just about practice. It's about concepts, fundamental concepts underlying most modern languages. You will learn about closures, currying, and lambdas. And you'll learn about monads. Those are the adapters and dongles of software. You'll compose code like Beethoven composed music. Then you'll continue with continuations and with types, with ways to create your own types, with sums of types, products of types, and exponentials of types, a whole algebra of types. We hope you'll like this course as much as your predecessors. But be warned, this course will make you sweat a lot, but most of all, you'll have fun. The data engineering pillar follows a similar structure. We start with a foundation of data design and modeling, and then we teach the students how to transform the raw data into information, and then how to analyze the information and obtain valuable knowledge. Let's welcome Professor Paolo Tonella, who is going to give us an overview about his two lectures in information modeling and analysis and knowledge analysis and management. Knowledge is a fundamental asset in our society, but the way to go from raw data to knowledge is long, and the first step in this trip is to learn models from data. In my information modeling course, students learn how to apply unsupervised learning techniques and supervised learning techniques to extract information from data. And this will be applied to the refactoring of code in one project and to the identification of bug prone models in the second project. The knowledge management course is about the consolidation of the extracted information into code. And first of all, we consider natural language processing techniques like part of speech tagging, semantic role labeling and sentiment analysis to extract knowledge from textual documents. And second, we consider semantic web technologies to represent this knowledge using ontologies. And this is applied in the first project to automatically identify bad smells in the code and in the second project to develop a search engine for the source code. The software and data engineering atelier combine the two topics in a practical setting. Every semester, students work on projects of increasing complexity. 
starting from the Design 101 Atelier, followed by the Visual Analytics Atelier and the Software Analytics Atelier in the third semester, where software itself becomes a piece of data to be analyzed. Let's welcome Dr. Marco Damros, who is going to give us a brief overview about the Visual Analytics Atelier. Visual Analytics Atelier is a course composed of four parts. We start with the theoretical part, discussing how human vision works and how to best design charts and visualization for effective communication of stories based on data. We then see how to use Jupyter Notebook and Pandas to perform data cleaning, analysis and visualization. We create interactive dashboards of data. We put particular emphasis on geospatial data with hands-on experience with GeoPandas, Bouquet and Folium. We discuss standard formats like Shapefile and GeoJSON, and we learn how to query and manipulate geocoded objects. We use geocoded data to create interactive visualization like choropleth maps, marker clusters, and heat map. In the third part of the course, we cover Elasticsearch, looking into how to index, query, and aggregate data at scale. We also see how to use Kibana and Canvas to create interactive dashboard powered by Elasticsearch, exploiting the full text search capabilities offered by the framework. In the area of big data, we also experiment with Apache Spark, with a particular focus on performance looking at Spark under the hood with the Catalyst Optimizer. We learn how to interactively analyze billions of data points with the Spark shell and the Zeppelin notebook. Students work on their master thesis at the end of the program. Let's take a look at the projects of some of our recent graduates. The first project is about how to react to traffic spikes by predicting whether your cloud-based software is about to go viral. The second student trained a simulated self-driving car and tested it to compare different machine learning strategies performed with different driving conditions. The third student built an interactive visualization to help operating and troubleshooting an industrial chemical robot in a local company here in Switzerland. So this was the structure of the master program in software and data engineering. The program is taught 100% in English. It is my pleasure to welcome the Software Institute professors who are teaching in the master program. Hi, I'm Gabriele Pavota and I'm teaching software analytics. Hi, I'm Marco D'Ambros and I teach visual analytics atelier. Hi, I'm Carlo Alberto Furia and I'm teaching software analysis and software design and modeling. Hi, I'm Matthias Hauswirt and I teach programming styles and software performance. Hi, I am Michele Lanza and I'm teaching the Design 101 Atelier. Hi again, my name is Cesare Bautasso and I teach the Software Architecture Lecture. Hi, I am Paolo Tonella and I teach Information Modeling and Knowledge Management. Okay, last but not least, why should you study these topics at the Università della Svizzera Italiana? I'll give you three good reasons. First, we really care about teaching. At our university, the quality of teaching is monitored at the end of every semester with students providing feedback about uh, the attended courses. In particular, each student will assign a grade from 1 to 10 to all the courses that he or she attended. And uh, these are the grades that we got for the 14 core courses in our master. As you can see from the average and from the comments that the students left, the students are quite happy with our courses. Second reason. Courses are taught by world-class researchers in the software field. The ranking that I'm showing you is from csrankings.org, a website where you can sort universities based on publications in top venues in different computer science fields. Our university is first in Europe for software engineering research in the last 10 years. Last but not least, all of this that you have seen is in Lugano, a beautiful city in the southern part of Switzerland. The deadline for applying to our master is on the 31st of May for non-European students who need a visa and 31st of August for European students. And you can also see what is the deadline to apply for a scholarship. Finally, here are some pointers for contacting us for applying to our master. 
We really hope to see you next year joining our Master in Software and Data Engineering at the Università della Svizzera Italiana. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you for watching this uh, thorough presentation of the Master in Software and Data Engineering uh, today. Uh, here with me to answer all the questions you're sending us, uh, the two co-directors of the program, uh, Professor uh, uh, Cesare Pautasso and Professor Gabriele Bavota. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Perfect. Let's dive uh, into the questions that we are getting. Um, before we start, I will remember to the, to the attendees that you have two ways to send us uh, questions. The first is through the live chat that you can see below this video. Uh, remember that this live chat will be on until the end of this session and then you cannot send any more questions through the chat. But below the chat, at the bottom of the page, you find a, a web form. You can keep sending your questions after the end of the session throughout the week and the next coming weeks. We will answer um, as soon as possible uh, as a study advisory service, and we will forward to the professors uh, all the academic-related questions. Okay, so let, the first question is uh, from Marco, and he says, good morning first, and how many students are there in, a, in an average class? Professor Pautasso, you can answer this. Uh, good morning, Marco. Thank you for your question. Our goal in this master program is to guarantee you a close one-on-one -on -one relationships uh, with the professors uh, teaching you the various classes. And uh, the current official target for uh, admission that we are going to make for the selection of your applications is uh, about uh, 20 students. And this is also the number of students present in most classes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go on further. Uh, Thomas is asking, uh, again, he, he says hi. Uh, everybody in the industry is talking about IoT, uh, so the Internet of Things. Is the master's degree uh, tackling this topic? Uh, Professor Pautasso, again. Uh, yes, the Internet of Things uh, was one of the reasons why we have uh, designed this master, because it's one of the application examples that uh, generate a huge amount of data that needs to be processed uh, using software. And there is uh, one particular lecture that you will find in the, in the software engineering pillar, which is called the Cyber Physical Software Engineering class. This class is uh, specifically targeting uh, this type of applications. And I'm very proud to confirm that uh, Massimo Vanzi uh, will be co-teaching uh, this lecture also next semester. Uh, Massimo Vanzi is the founder of the Arduino company, which uh, is a very successful company building uh, IoT devices. And uh, you will have uh, the opportunity to uh, program uh, projects and, and demo applications using this type of Internet of Things devices in this class. And you will have a chance to learn from uh, the person that actually invented that. Okay, very interesting. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question, uh, Michele is asking, uh, dear professors, can you please explain what's the um, relationship uh, between uh, the code lounge and the master? So uh, maybe Professor Bavota can explain a little bit to maybe all other students uh, and attendees what's code lounge. Maybe it's not so clear for everybody. And what's the relationship? Sure, sure. Thanks for the question. So, Code Lounge is a center for research and development. It's a part of the Software Institute, that is basically the institute within the university running this master. And uh, I would say it's a great opportunity for our students because, uh, especially in the context of their master thesis, they can work on projects proposed by Code Lounge. Now, why this is a great opportunity for them? Well, because uh, Code Lounge works at the intersection between research and development. So mm -hmm. they work on very advanced projects, very innovative projects. They apply the latest technology, latest frameworks. So it's basically yet another learning opportunity for our students. And I think uh, around 40% of our students as of today decide to do their thesis in the context of Code Lounge. So this is basically how they participate in the master. And of course, the director of uh, Code Lounge, Marco Dampos, is also one of the professors for visual analytics at the 
Okay. Okay, thanks. Michele is asking another question, uh, a more uh, administrative, I would say, one, so I, I can tackle this. He is asking that if its level of English is not very good, if you can take language classes while attending the master's. So, Michele, uh, basically, you can take uh, uh, English classes uh, while you're attending the master. The university is offering English classes to all uh, enrolled students. But before this, uh, you must, you know, uh, show us that you have uh, uh, at least your English level is beyond the, the threshold we, uh, we put, which is a B2 English level. Uh, according to one of the uh, international certificates, it, either IELTS or TOEFL or a Cambridge certificate. Uh, we know that examination centers are now, uh, you know, put closed, you know, the exams are put on hold because of this uh, pandemic outbreak. Uh, and for this reason, we uh, moved the deadline uh, uh, for students to present their examination, their, their test, uh, a little bit further. So you have until the end of the of the year, so until December, but you still must show us that you've got this level. Uh, of course, if you are an English mother tongue, and it's not your case, but if you and if you studied a bachelor degree entirely in English, there's no need for this certificate. For all other cases, you must uh, uh, attach one or show us before the end of the year. And then if you want, you can add English classes to your master, uh, regular master courses. Then the next one is from Miriam, uh, and it's a question about uh, internship. Does this master gives internship opportunities? And if yes, where and in which semester? Uh, Professor Bavota, can you answer? Okay, yes, so uh, our students uh, have for sure the opportunity to do an internship in the context again of the master thesis. We already had uh, many theses that um, were run in the context of, uh, of companies, which basically means that the company has a problem that is related in some way to the topics of the master, so to software and or data engineering. And the students work with the company for something like six months, I would say at least six months. So yes, there is this possibility. We already had, uh, I think, at least uh, six, seven cases. Let's consider that this is a master that uh, uh, just has two years of history, so it's quite new. And um, the students, of course, get the credits for the thesis that are 30 CTS. So in some way, they have the opportunity to do an internship while also getting some credits and uh, doing their master thesis. So yes, it's definitely possible. Okay. Okay, perfect. And uh, a little bit uh, uh, linked to uh, this question, what Professor Bavota said is the next one from Cristiano. Uh, he is asking uh, what kind of ties with the industry this program has, and if we as a university or in general the institute or, and the faculty provide ways to transition easily to the job market. Uh, who wants to tackle this? Professor Bautasso? Yes, I can uh, thank you, Cristiano, for for your question. Um, we I don't I do not want to mention ties with uh, specific uh, companies at, at this time, but uh, we do have um, a tradition of inviting guest lecturers from industry into our lectures. So from time to time, you will have a chance to uh, see experts and uh, senior uh, developers or architects come and, and present into ordinary classes. Uh, we, you have already heard about the uh, internship opportunities. So this is also, uh, there is a, a whole uh, ecosystem of, of companies uh, here in Lugano and in Ticino and in Switzerland with which we collaborate with and they are uh, very open to hosting our, our students. Uh, in the past, we have also organized uh, field trips to conferences, to industry conferences, where the students have been uh, given the opportunity to uh, see uh, very close uh, upfront uh, specific uh, topics, specific technologies uh, directly, uh, you know, in the in the real world. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I can, uh, you know, of course, uh, which ways uh, do we support to transition to the job market? Well, of course, there is the the usual job fairs where where you can. Uh, visit companies that come to the university periodically and, and interview and, and uh, get to know them uh, as well. And, and um, basically, um, I can confirm that uh, so far, 
100% of our graduates have received uh, job offers already during their master thesis. And everybody uh, so far has found a job in the Swiss IT sector right at the end uh, of the program as soon as they have graduated. So in this, uh, given the, the education that we give you in this program, there has been absolutely no problem into transitioning to the job market for our existing students. Okay, so flawless, outstanding numbers so far. Uh, we've received a, a question from the through through the form, uh, uh, and it's from uh, from Mark, and he is asking. Uh, I'm not sure I I, I got it, uh, but are electives uh, mandatory? Those that are listed in the uh, structure and contents, or can I pick electives from uh, the entire span of the faculty? Uh, Gabriele Babota, professor, can you ask? Can you ask? Yes. Me? So basically, we provide to students a predefined list of electives for every semester that they can take without asking for any authorization. Mm -hmm. But if they want to attend a specific course, they just have to send us an email. And if the course makes sense in the context of the study plan, we don't have any problem to accept the request and then the student can take any other courses in study. OK, thanks. Uh... Then I think we uh, went through all the questions that we received as of this moment. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, send them in uh, or we're going towards the end of this session. Um, maybe I just want to ask to the two co-directors of the program uh, if they have a final word or and, then, and to link with this, how do they think uh, the situation uh, with, will develop or if there are any specific plans uh, related to this uh, to the pandemic and to the to the coronavirus what will what will happen in september do we already know well i i can say that uh, during this semester we made a smooth transition to from uh, physical classes to online courses and the students have not lost uh, even a single day of, of the lecture and uh, um, basically now, we, we've all the, all the classes in the master follow a format in which the lectures are still delivered live, where it uh, allows students that are listening from home to ask questions and interact uh, with, the, with the professor as the lecture is presented. But also the lectures are recorded in case uh, people want to watch them later. And uh, this uh, greatly supported the, the learning of, of the students. And we, we've seen that from the exams, the midterm exams results, uh, people have been able to attend uh, successfully uh, the courses in this format. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the answer. Uh, and that as far as I, I'm, I know, uh, for, the, for September, you know, the situation is so fluid right now that uh, it's still unclear if we are going to be, you know, physically uh, here with students in classes. Of course, everybody hopes uh, that this is going to be the case. I think, in particular, professors. Am I am I right? Yeah, I mean, we can't wait for start again the physical lectures, but uh, of course, um, we'll see what happens in September. But we are ready to both going online or not. Also, also consider that uh, there is a new campus uh, being finished as, as we speak. So there is a chance that uh, sometime during next semester, we will be moving to a brand new campus, uh, assuming that uh, we can all uh, meet each other and do the lectures uh, in, in the Th classrooms. Thanks for remembering this, Professor Pautasso. Uh, the faculty is going uh, to move to uh, an entirely new facility uh, sometime uh, in the coming uh, months. Uh, and of course, this will uh, know, improve the, the the experience of all the students. So uh, we didn't get any more questions uh, right now. Keep uh, sending uh, questions through the form at the end of this uh, session. Um, thank you for uh, for participating. Uh, I hope that uh, the answers that the two co-directors uh, gave to to the questions you sent us were thorough. I'm sure they were, and that they helped out uh, you in deciding what's going to come next for your academic uh, challenges of the future. Uh, maybe uh, a final uh, word from, uh, from either Professor Pautasso or Professor Babota 
to, to the students that are watching us? Sure. I, I mean, thank you very much for attending this online event. And we really hope to meet you in person in September. Yes, if you if you like to write uh, software, come come to learn how to uh, master how to write software and apply to process large amounts of data. This is what we teach you here in Lugano. Looking forward to seeing all of you here in, uh, in September. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much to the two co-directors of this uh, master in software and data engineering. Uh, thanks for attending, and uh, for me, for us, it's uh, it's a goodbye. Thanks. Thank you.